The Louisiana Department of Education presents the District Test Coordinator webinar for January 10th, 2017. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to cover quite a few things today. We're going to go through our month-by-month -month checklist along with an accountability update, and then we're going to go into a few things with assessment administration that is going to include test security, fall EOC updates, ELDA and Law 1 administration that is coming up soon, some ACT updates, NAEP administration, LEAP and Spring EOC preparation, and technology readiness. And then we'll follow up at the end with support and communication. All right, the checklist that we use um, is a month-by-month -month checklist that's in the assessment library, and it outlines all the key dates for each month by assessment. And we're going to go ahead and look at some of the January dates for this month. So these dates um, are listed on two slides. The first slide you're looking at right now lists our communication and support. So we have webinar dates and collaboration events that are coming up. We also have items for ELDA and Law 1 assessments and items to prepare for the LEAP and EOC um, administrations this spring. The EdTech monthly call is January 19th, and that is a call that is specifically for district technology coordinators, but it is also informational for testing people to attend as well. So if um, you play both of those roles, you will probably be on that call on the 19th, but we wanted to give you a heads up. And then also we have our collaboration events that begin at the end of this month and then into the first um, few days of February. And those are for supervisors and teacher leaders this time. As always, we have our office hours that are every Tuesday at 1 o'clock using the same link you used to get here. The training for ELDA and Law 1 should begin for district and school personnel this month. Also, technology preparation includes ensuring the TSMs have been set up and Insight is installed and tested on the devices that will be used for testing this spring. NAEP will begin January 23rd in those schools that have been selected. Also, the AP course audit deadline is January 31st, and ACT approved accommodation submission and verifying student information and materials continues through this month and into February. These are checklist dates for February. The key tasks for next month include preparing for accommodations for LEAP and EOC and ordering work keys, accommodated materials. Also during February, you want to ensure that technology is ready for spring assessments, and our ELDA Law 1 assessments begin, and then the NAEP administration will continue. All right, we're going to move into accountability. I wanted to update you on some ESSA framework. So in late January, we are going to release an updated framework on the ESSA website that captures those updates that were made to the original version released in September. And these were made based on feedback from you all, other educators, parents, different advocacy groups across the state. Superintendent White will be providing an overview of this updated framework at the January and February collaborations. So that will be um, a session to attend if you are planning on coming to the collaboration. Also, the Accountability Commission has been meeting um, last year and um, up until yesterday and reviewed proposed changes to the commission as part of the ESSA plan. And if you'd like to look at these changes, you can view the meeting that was held yesterday's presentation, and that's linked in this presentation. You can also look at the videos from previous meetings and presentations in the accountability library as well. 
And if you have any feedback on the framework, you can email ESSA Louisiana at LA.gov, or you can attend one of the meetings, and those are linked here as well. All right, we're going to go ahead and dive into assessment administration topics for this year. We're going to go ahead and talk about test security. So I wanted to update you on a few things. The first thing is we produced a test security summary from the previous school year. Districts that had at least one test security violation can retrieve their summary from the FTP. The memo also outlines actions that the LDOE is taking in the following areas. So it will talk about the LEA summary reports, the Cavion test security audit, and also the Office of the Inspector General investigations. A summary of the LEA specific testing irregularities is included if that applies to your district. So the first part of the document is the memo that outlines these things. And the second part is if you had testing irregularities, there is a report that breaks down by each school and all of the voids reported for last school year. And it does not represent any new test security violations. So this report is from the 2015-16 school year. The memo is also linked in the assessment library if you just wanted to look at the memo with those um, LDOE actions that are included. So the LEAs that had at least one test security incident last school year can access this report. What this report um, is intended to do is to prepare the district for the upcoming assessments. So things that you should be thinking about would be identifying areas of security concern. So if you look at this report and you see data that represents any of these things, this would be something to include in your planning meetings for how to improve for the upcoming assessments. This would also include any administrative concerns that you have, evaluating the policies that you have in place for test security, and then also providing any support or training you would need for test administration procedures across the district or in schools. The second thing I wanted to update you on is test security services. So in order to help districts with test monitoring and other test security services, we released an RFP for test security services. And this was given to Cavion, which is the nation's test security expert. Districts will be able to purchase these services for a reduced cost that is negotiated by the LDOE, and we are currently in the process of um, negotiations with that. And so additional information about how you can purchase these services will be shared as soon as this process is complete. All right, we have a couple updates for EOC. Scoring is complete for the initial winter EOC administration in eDirect. The student and class reports are available. The district CSV file will be available in about the next week. There is a user guide and an interpretive guide that are posted in eDirect that explains how to access and use reports. The interpretive guide is also in the assessment library, so you may have accessed it from there as well. The item analysis report is no longer a report that is available. So the interpretive guide lists the types of reports and outlines how to use those reports, what they look like when you go into eDirect, and explains how um, the scoring is um, processed. So these are just a couple updates about EOC. Again, the CSV file will be posted in about a week. All right, we're going to move on to ELDA and Law 1. Those assessments begin next month. So I want to go over test security for these administrations along with preparation information. And I know we have quite a few new DTCs on the call, so I wanted to give you some background and some basic information on this for those of you um, who are new. 
The first thing I want to go through is test security. So your training for ELDA and Law 1 administrations will begin this month, and so test security is a part of that. These slides are available separately in the assessment library just for test security. So if you want to download the test security presentation to share with your district, that is available in the assessment library. And those slides are included here. So violations of test security um, are listed in the next few slides. They are defined in Bulletin 118, and this includes and is not limited to um, giving examinees access to test questions before testing, coaching or interfering with examinees in any manner during testing, and participating in, encouraging, or failing to report any violation. Violations of test security can result in the revocation of a teaching or leadership certificate as defined in Bulletin 746. A testing irregularity is any incident in test handling or administration that leads to a question regarding the security of the test or of the accuracy of the test data. Schools and districts should follow the reporting process that's outlined here and email all testing irregularities to assessment at la.gov. And again, we'd rather you email or call us and ask if you have any questions um, before it happens. So if you have questions you want to email us about test security, please, please, please call or email. So some examples of testing irregularities um, would be the inability to complete a test session due to an emergency or a student using the wrong answer document or unlocking a test session. This is definitely not a complete list. Um, so any questions regarding what is or is not a testing irregularity can definitely be sent to us through email or you can call. Access is defined as handling the materials, including reading, reviewing, or analyzing test items or student responses before, during, or after testing, except if someone is providing accommodations. Districts and schools must ensure that only a limited number of people that are trained in test security have access to secure testing booklets. Secure materials are test materials that contain administrative um, test items or student responses and to which access is restricted. So some secure test materials would include the student books, the login information, answer documents. Some processes to ensure the proper accounting of materials would include a check-in and check-out procedure that includes counting materials, making sure that the appropriate staff is trained in all of the assessment administration, and then monitoring those processes during administration to ensure test security. Active monitoring means that test administrators should be actively engaged in observing students' behavior at all times during the administration. So some of the practices to help ensure active monitoring could be moving about the test area so the student's actions can be viewed from multiple vantage points, um, test administrators being aware that Active monitoring also applies maintaining test security during breaks by limiting interaction between students. Also making sure that TAs are, um, who are involved in small groups should pay attention to ensure the students receive the appropriate accommodations at the appropriate time. While it's essential to actively monitor during a test, it is considered a violation of test security for TAs to do any of these things. So some of those things would include viewing a student test booklet to see if they use the strategy, memorizing test questions, or copying test questions. Plagiarism occurs when a student duplicates another student's response or an external source. So an example um, would include similar responses across multiple answer documents. 
and use of information from the Internet. So some practices to help prevent that would be administering the assessment to students, taking the same test within the same day, and limiting reopen sessions by scheduling in such a way that ensures the student would complete the individual session. Test administrators that test students with accommodations should be trained on what those accommodations are and who receives those accommodations and when they should receive them. All right, we're going to go ahead and dive into ELDA and Law 1. I want to give you an overview of ELDA. And this is for people who have done testing before, but again, this is so that everyone is on the same page since we have quite a few new district test coordinators. So ELDA, which is the English Language Development Assessment, measures annual growth of English language development among LEP students, which is limited English proficiency. So students in K through 12 who are designated as LEP must take the ELDA. It is aligned to Louisiana's English language development standards, and it measures both academic and social language. And so the assessment has four domains, speaking, listening, reading, and writing. It's also organized into four grade level clusters. The assessments for K to 2 use inventories. Grade clusters 3 to 5, 6 to 8, and 9 to 12 include multiple choice and constructed response items. Quick overview of Law 1. So this is the LEAP Alternate Assessment Level 1, and this assesses students with significant cognitive disabilities in grades 3 through 8, 10, and 11 who will not participate in the general statewide assessment. It's a standardized performance-based assessment, and this one correlates with the extended standards um, of Louisiana. And there are three areas, ELA, math, and science that are tested. Students who are in grades three to eight and 10 will take the ELA and math portions. And then for science, students who are in grades four, eight, and 11 take that section. Law 1 participation requires that the test was identified as the appropriate assessment on the current IEP before the test administration. Failure to document Law 1 participation on the current IEP will result in a student earning zero points in the school performance score. All right, so I want to talk about the materials for these two assessments. You will begin receiving ELDA and Law 1 materials on January 24th. So these are already being mailed to you. You will receive um, pre-identified answer documents and inventories for the students who are identified in CIS as LEP or eligible for Law 1 by November. So that is how the materials will be sent to you. It's based off of the information in CIS in November. You will still code TA numbers and information regarding their classification, exceptionalities, and the accommodations students receive during testing those documents. The shipment of the materials will include district and school overage. There's also a receipt notice an additional materials ordering system and accountability form that are available in eDirect, and this will become available on the 25th. Also, DTCs and SDCs are responsible for completing the security checklist for testing materials. You do not need to return copy of these to us or DRC. You need to keep these on file at the district and school offices for a year. You will also be getting DRC plastic return bags, and these are for school test coordinators to use to prepare the boxes containing scorable test materials to give back to you all, the DTCs. 
return labels will be provided, and there will be enough for ELDA and Law 1 when you receive these in the mail. So the return labels will include labels for both administrations. The boxes that are sent to you should be saved because that is what you are going to be returning the materials in. The labels for scorable materials are going to be tan. The labels for non-scorable materials are white. And you will need to indicate on the labels the total number of boxes for the pickup. So UPS is already scheduled to come to the district office to pick up these items on March 20th. And this includes all materials, so used materials, unused materials, scorable materials, and non-scorable materials will all be picked up by UPS. All of this information is in the manuals that are already in eDirect, but I just wanted to highlight a couple points for scheduling of ELDA. So the administration starts February 6th and goes through March 17th. You all as the district can set your own schedule for administering this assessment as long as it's in that window. Makeup testing is required and it needs to be scheduled within the testing window. So the sooner you start testing, the better so that you have the opportunity to have that makeup time if needed towards the end. There are no strict time limits on the reading and writing test for grades three to 12. However, the listening and speaking tests are timed. There's also no required sequence for administering reading, writing, and listening. However, the speaking test is recommended to be given last for grades 3 to 12 because the TA will be recording scores in the answer document. Each domain test for grades 3 to 12 must be administered and completed on the day it is scheduled. The speaking test for 3 to 12 and parts of the kindergarten and grades one to two inventories are administered individually to students. For law one, it's the same dates for administration. So it's February 6th through March 17th. Again, you can set your own schedule for administering this within the testing window. Law one is not timed. The TAs will assess students individually, and they may administer this over several days or weeks. The tasks within a content area must be administered in order. Some reminders for both ELDA and Law 1. The TAs and coordinators need to complete the pre and post administration confidentiality agreement. Again, this should be kept on file I'm at your offices for three years. The training for school test coordinators and any personnel that will help administer the assessment should begin this month if you haven't started already. Another reminder is no LEP accommodations or translating are permitted on the ELDA. The students must respond in English. Their responses cannot be translated. If they receive accommodations, test read aloud or communication assistance, they may have all the parts on the assessment except reading, read aloud, signed, or cued. The directions to the reading that appear in the test booklet at the beginning may be read aloud, signed, or cued. So just to recap some of these dates, the test coordinator manual and the test administration manuals are already located for ELDA and Law 1 in eDirect. I also linked you the Law 1 Assessment Guide and the ELDA Assessment Guide, which is on our state website. Beginning January 24th, you will receive materials for both assessments. February 6th through March 17th, you will begin administering these tests. And you can also enter and assign TA numbers. March 16th is the last day to order additional material. So make sure that um, if you have used the overage, that you order additional materials if you need them. And then on March 20th, UPS will be there to pick up all of the materials. And that is also the day that testing irregularity and void forms are due to LDOE. I'm going to pause for just a minute to answer some questions.
We had a question about the link to the webinar that is after this call for ACT and Work Keys. And I am going to send that to you all so you can see it on your screen. We had a question about the item analysis for ESC. So no, that is not a report that is available anymore. The reports that are available are located in the document that is on our website in the assessment library or in eDirect, and that's the interpretive guide for EOC. And it outlines the reports that are available, how to use them, what's included, and other information. I have a question about who takes the LDA. So students who are identified as LEP would take the LDA. So it also depends on what grade they're in. There are grade clusters for the ELDA assessment. So whoever is designated as LEP would take the ELDA. So additional materials um, are sent in an overage. So the district and schools will get overage materials in case they have students who have transferred or um, that weren't included in the November count. So there will be extras that are already sent. If your school or district uses those materials, then you would need to request additional materials after you all, the DTCs, have used any of that overage that was sent to you. The materials are in eDirect. So if you log in and go under General Information and Documents, you can click either by assessment, so you could choose Law 1 or you could choose ELDA, or you can just say you want to view all documents and those manuals are posted in there. So there's the TAM and the TCM for both ELDA and Law 1 in eDirect. I had a question about um, translations for ELDA. So no translating can be done for ELDA. No LEP accommodations can be provided. This is an assessment that is assessing their English um, language development, so no LEP accommodations can be given. Okay, I think some of the other questions I'm going to answer in a few minutes. So I'm going to hold on those. I'm going to go ahead and move forward with NAEP. All right, so NAEP is given annually in reading and math to a select number of students in fourth and eighth grades. Smaller numbers of students will be tested in additional subjects. NAEP testing begins this month on the 30th and will end March 10th. There are some schools who are going to be participating in a writing comparability study, and those schools that have already been notified will test between April 24th and May 19th. The um, NAEP testing will be delivered in a couple of formats, so paper and pencil, tablet and laptop, um, would have already been notified to your school how, how they'll be taking the test. There's also a link here to a tutorial for preparing students who are testing on the tablet. So this would be helpful for those schools. All right, we have some ACT and work keys reminders and some items of support for your districts. There are at least three more webinars that are offered for test administration training for the paper-based testing, and that begins on February 3rd. There will be another test administration Q&A on February 14th, and the link to register will also be in the newsletter. All students are initially enrolled to test with standard time. Also, anyone at the district or school level can update individual student records through the Edit Enrollment Count screen. The link is provided to help STCs upload their 12th grade students. Barcode labels will not be generated for additional users. Any student added to PA Next after February 23rd will have to be hand-coded. So these students will not have a barcode label. Also, you will receive the manuals for ACT the week of February 23rd. Reminders for work keys include using the LACID for the examinee's ID when enrolling students for work keys. 
the DTCs and SDCs will need to update the materials quantities that are needed for ACT work keys accommodations in Pearson Access next. Remember, there's a 30-day wait period between tests that's recommended to allow for remediation. Below are also some resources for ACT and work keys that are also found in the ACT state testing website, but they're also linked here for you. Here are some ACT online testing resources. So remember we have districts that are piloting ACT online, and these are resources specific to them. They are also on the ACT state website, and that will help you prepare for the ACT online. We have several resources and training sessions available, and those are outlined here. So there are some things that you already have. So you already have the ACT and work keys schedule of events. You can click here for administration manual. Also, the ACT and work keys accommodations videos um, and webcasts are available at the link that's included. Now until February 23rd is that window to update the student screen and Pearson access for the initial ACT test materials and work keys accommodations paper test materials. And then the Q&A sessions are also listed below. So remember one is today, we have one on the 24th as well, and in February we have another one. All right, moving on to LEAP. Just a reminder about our grades three to four computer-based or paper-based options for testing. So districts, you all will need to indicate paper or online for every site for grades three to four in your district. You will do this under the materials tab in eDirect, and you have until January 17th at 5 p.m. The table below lists the options for paper and online. We will be working with LEAs individually in the coming months to determine tech readiness, and the best path forward for these assessments. So I want to show you what this will look like. So when you go into eDirect, you're going to click the Materials tab, and you will select LEAP Spring 2017 as the administration. You'll click your district and the school, and you will choose either paper or online for both prompts. So it will ask you how grade three will test at that school and how grade four will test at that school and you will select online or paper. If you have a school that doesn't have third or fourth grade, you can just leave it blank. We're we are only um, gathering the data for those third and fourth grade options for paper and online. So when you do this, you will have prompts displayed below um, that will tell you to save and complete. You will have to save and complete for every site in your district. So if you have 50 schools with third and fourth grade, you will need to save and complete it 50 times. You'll also be able to access the status of your schools under the status report, and you can also export that to Excel. All right, the LEAP practice test for ELA Math and Social Studies will become available in late winter. December 22nd, you all were given access to begin test setup in eDirect. So to prepare for the LEAP practice test administration, you can manage users in eDirect, and you can begin setting up um, test sessions, uploading students, et cetera wanted to point out a couple differences between the LEAP practice test and the operational test. So they are similar. However, you all can use the practice test how you see fit for the needs of your schools. Students can also take this test more than once if that is something that that school or district um, wants to do. The field test items that are included in our operational test are not included in these practice tests. 
We also give you the four sessions for ELA so that teachers have um, all task types included, but the operational test will just have three sessions. Also for the practice test, there is not an additional materials tab because these materials are not secure. So anything that you would normally need to request during an operational test, um, like a Braille test, you would not need to do that for the practice test. You will have access to these documents or files in eDirect, so you don't have to request them. We'll have more details on the LEAP practice test um, over the next few weeks with our office hours calls and then our monthly call um, in the beginning of February. So as I mentioned a minute ago, these are some tasks that you can begin completing in eDirect as part of test setup, so uploading students, assigning and viewing accommodations, creating test sessions. So I know a lot of districts have already started this, um, and some of y'all even started this during the holidays, so I was very impressed. Um, just to kind of get this out of the way, so when the practice test rolls around, you have a, a huge chunk of this completed and um, will be less time dedicated to setting up the test. You can already get this out of the way. So some key dates, a lot of things you have available now. So installables you would need to run the practice test and the spring assessments are already in eDirect. The OTT and the tutorials are available. So remember the OTT is the online tools training. Students can access this when they click Insight on the desktop. This is something that Students and teachers should be using to become familiar with the features and tools in the system. And then there's also tutorials available in eDirect that are voiceovers highlighting each feature and how to use it. We will um, have an update release in winter for grades 3 to 8 ELA and math. Also, the user guides are available, the manage user system is available, and the test setup system is available. And the practice test will be available um, late winter, so you will definitely be notified when those are available. Some resources for LEAP include our assessment guides. These are already available on the state website, and they are linked here. And this is something that should be in the hands of teachers, so this will help them understand the assessments um, and be able to use that to drive instruction. Also, the OTTs are available, which were just mentioned. There are also some guidance documents that are available. So the online testing scheduling guidance is linked here. This is a great resource for you to look at when you start to schedule either how you're going to do the practice test, but definitely when you're doing spring um, EOC and LEAP. And so it basically gives you examples based on devices and number of students on how you can schedule appropriately. All right, I'm going to pause for a minute to answer questions. One of the questions is that March 16th is the day before the testing window closes for ELDA and LA1. Um, it is not a mistake. That is the last day to request materials. Um, that is definitely not the preferred day to request additional materials, but that is the last day to do that, and that is March 16th. The assessment's last day is the 17th, but if there is a circumstance that comes up and you needed another one and didn't have any materials after the overage, that is a possibility um, that you could use that day to request the materials, and those would be shipped to you. All of the manuals um, for every assessment, but specifically this question for LDA and LA1, are in eDirect, so they will not be mailed to you. These are manuals that are in eDirect for downloading. The deadline for choosing paper or online for grades three to four, um, well, it, it already started, so you could have begun selecting this in the system, but the last date would be the 17th of this month and it closes at 5 o'clock p.m. So that is the last day to indicate paper or online for third and fourth graders. We had a question about ACT and WorkKeys training. So there are webinars that will be available that are Q&A. So one of those is after 
this call today. They also provide a lot of trainings in the system that you can access at any time. So those are also linked in this presentation, and they are on the ACT state website. For those schools who are participating in the ACT online pilot, you will be um, receiving communication about the steps that you need to take going forward. Right now, um, the technical guidance documents are the only thing that have been sent to you to review, so you are in a good place. There will be a training that will be specifically for ACT Online that will be held. Those dates will be sent to you and also in the newsletter. And then the documents that were linked on one of the ACT slides, there are four that are specifically for ACT Online, so those would be some resources for those schools who are participating. I have a question about the practice test, um, like resources, and a, a couple questions about that. So um, again, right now, you can manage users, and you can do test setup for the practice test. All documents that would include guidance documents, um, educator scoring documents, those kinds of things have not been released that released yet, and they will be released soon. So anything pertaining to um, reports or how things are scored, um, when the practice test will be available, those things are coming um, soon. So the only things that are available now specifically related to the practice test would be managing users and the test setup. I've got a question about administering the practice test. So the assessment guides that are already posted online go into detail about the operational test for LEAP and districts can use that guidance to help with scheduling if they choose to schedule the practice test as an actual run through. There's also another document that is the online testing schedule guidance document that talks about suggestions for how to schedule with the devices. So those two documents, the online testing scheduling guidance and the assessment guides would be two resources to help you um, plan how to administer each session and how you want to do that. So those are laid out in those two documents. If you want to see your um, entry for grades three and four paper online, after you complete the save and complete process for all of the sites, you can view your own status after that's over. So if you click status, you'll be able to see if you haven't started, if you're in progress, or if you've completed, and you can export that information um, if you wish. So after you do save and complete, that is when that information will be stored in the system for that school for grades three and four, and you can um, access the status of your own district site. Question about the third and fourth grade practice test. So since third and fourth grades have the option of paper online, that would be the same as for the practice test. Another question about the practice test. So the device that, or devices that you have your students testing on for the operational test, it's strongly suggested that that is what they use for the practice test. So if you're using Chromebooks, laptops, desktops, whatever you're using for the operational test, the LEAP practice test would be available to take on those devices as well. The name of the LEAP practice test would include SPRING in the drop-down, so if you're looking for that, it would um, say the LEAP practice test SPRING 2017, if you're looking for the drop-down for that administration. The practice tests are already made. This is not something that the teachers make. Um, Teacher-made assessments can be done in Eagle. So if teachers log into Eagle, they can select questions from the test bank and create their own assessments for their students to take online. The practice tests are tests that are already made for you. This is not something that the teachers would make. I have a question about accommodation. So for any administration, Accommodations have to be in place 30 days prior to that assessment. So ELDA and Law 1 begin on February 6th. 
accommodations would need to have been in place on January 6th. So this is a rule for any assessment. It needs to be 30 days prior to whatever assessment that student would be administered. I have a question about um, headphones for students taking the assessment. So if there is a student who has tests read aloud as an accommodation, they would need headphones to listen to the test being read aloud to them on the computer. If a student does not have the test read aloud accommodation, they wouldn't, it wouldn't require them to have headphones for the assessment. We have a couple questions about the assessment guidance. Um, I'm not sure if I answered this before I saw this question, but just to um, reiterate, the assessment guides that are located in the State Department's website are grade-specific and content-specific, so you can pull up third grade math, fourth grade ELA. Within those assessment guides, there are a ton of resources, one including how the sessions are broken down, um, basically a blueprint of the test. So if you are um, interested in knowing you know, the number of questions for sessions or what those sessions look like, those, uh, that information would be located in the assessment guidance documents that are on the website. And they are also um, linked on the previous slide that I just showed, which says assessment guides. Those guides would be your best um, resource about how the test is designed and set up. And so that could also be used for how you plan for the practice test and for scheduling purposes. So it says how many sessions for each test um, and then some kind of guidance on how to schedule that. Question about a session being administered in one day. So yes, um, a session of a test has to be administered um, in one day. It cannot be administered over more than one day, so that student would have to complete the session in one day. Another question about um, tests read aloud. So if a student has an accommodation that the test is read aloud, the computer test will read the test to the student. This will be activated in the system attached to that student. So if the student has tests read aloud, when that student logs in, the test that they um, log into will read aloud directions and the questions. Students who are in third and fourth grade who are taking the paper version will also have tests read aloud um, sent to them, but it will be an audio file for those students to use. So test read aloud is done by the computer or an audio file for grades three to four who are taking paper. If you have a student who has an accommodation of a Braille test, that test for the LEAP practice test would already be mailed to you. So you do not need to request the Braille test for the practice test if that student is already in the system and has Braille as an accommodation. If you have a student that you just received at the school um, or your district that needs a Braille test, um, you can email us um, at assessment at la.gov and we can work with you on that. But if you have students that are receiving a Braille accommodation, they will already have that test for the LEAP practice test mailed to them. For the LEAP practice test, you will need to assign and review accommodations for the LEAP practice test. So those are that's part of the test setup. So when you upload your students, you'll be able to assign accommodations to those students that need them for the LEAP practice test. All right, I'm going to save some of these questions to answer in a few minutes. I think we're going to get to some of these. Um, also, if you have questions that are in the q and I'm going to respond to all of them um, individually. So um, don't leave just yet. Or you can email me at assessment at la.gov and I'm, uh, I'll reach out to you to answer those um, student or school-specific questions that some of you are asking. But I will be staying on after the call to go through these questions and respond to you. All right, let's go ahead and jump into technology readiness. Districts should be continuing to install the TSMs for schools and Insight on the testing devices. 
in order to help districts prepare for online testing. The TSM has a built-in tool that helps gauge the effect online testing will have on a school's network. So there are ping trend graphs that allow districts and schools to see the times when internet is really heavy um, at the school. There's also a capacity estimator, and this estimates the time it would take to download the test engine based on the number of kids that are testing, and then also how long a student would wait for a test to load with and without the content caching through the TSM and the time it will take to do that. Um, also by March, sites should have testing schedules in place and completed the test setup in eDirect. The technology readiness tool, which is also linked here, provides um, a mechanism for tracking and analyzing devices in your school or district, the readiness of your network, and then the readiness of the broadband for classroom learning and assessments. This tool is open year-round for you all to submit and update data, as well as pulling reports on your progress at any time. So this is a tool um, that is very helpful and can be used throughout the year. Um, this month we are um, releasing the statewide and legislative report of district and school readiness for technology. Also the district footprint snapshots will be sent to your district's technology coordinator and testing coordinators. Over the summer, just something to think about, um, this would be the time to update all new and upgraded devices and network information for the deadline we have in the fall for the technology readiness tool. So I know a lot of you all are already starting to plan for the upcoming school year and for different processes during the summer. So this would be something to include. The snapshot is shown here and this is going to help your district inform them on decisions that need to be made related to upgrades, new purchases, um, strategic planning that's related to technology, so devices, network, broadband decisions. Um, again, you'll be receiving that updated footprint in the next few weeks to use as part of the needs assessment for the 2017-2018 planning and ESSA focus areas. There are some documents and guides that are going to be developed um, as one of the action items from a technology work group that we are forming um, across the state. If you have questions about technology, you can email edtech at la.gov. All right, so I mentioned this for a quick second at the beginning of the call, but I wanted to really highlight this. January um, and February, teacher, leader, and supervisor collaborations are right around the corner. They are gonna take place in these locations. We have um, two sessions that I wanted to mention to you all. Well, actually three. One I talked to you about earlier that Superintendent White is going to be reviewing the updated framework for ESSA. The second one is specifically for technology coordinators, but I know some of you also wear that hat or may be interested in coming, and this would be um, specific to technology updates related to E-rate, different resources. Um, so anyone who would be involved with technology would need to attend. And then we also have another session that we delivered in September and across the state in October that we are re-delivering um, at these collaborations. And this is for the preparation for spring EOC and LEAP. So this will go through how to use test setup to make sure EOC and LEAP are ready to roll overview of the OTTs. So this session has already been done, but we know um, we have a lot of people who are new or may have not attended the other sessions. So this would be a repeat of the fall one, except this one's just going to be specific to LEAP and ESC for the spring.
and there is an overview that's available that you can review and it gives more information about all of the sessions and how to register. Definitely accountability and assessment personnel should be there if they have not attended the preparation um, session for eDirect and, and getting those assessments started. Also the test, I'm sorry, the technology coordinators for that other session that we're doing that is um, specific to E-Rate and ESSA things. So I want to make sure that you all were aware of that. You can also download materials for the sessions you'll be going to um, starting the 27th. As always, if you have any questions, you can email us at assessment at la.gov. You can also call us on the hotline. Um, if you have questions related to technology readiness, you can email edtech at la.gov. I have a few next steps for you before we wrap up. We want to make sure that you all are beginning test set up for the LEAP practice test and that you schedule the office hours in your calendar. Those are every Tuesday at 1 o'clock with the same link to this webinar. Also, um, last month was the first month that I included this link to a survey. This is the second row on the screen. It says Assessment and Accountability Monthly Call Survey. This is a survey um, that anyone who attends this webinar should take so that I can get feedback from you all about what support you still need. This is also um, a way that we keep track of who has attended. So if someone has it, we can reach out to them and we can have network support those people. So please take the survey so we know that you all were included in this webinar and provide any means of support that you need so we can get with you on that. Also the 17th, which is next week, is the deadline for the grades three and four paper and online enrollment. The 19th is the EdTech monthly call. So you are more than welcome to attend. It is um, for technology coordinators, but it definitely relates to assessment. So this would be something you may be interested in attending. And of course, the collaborations that begin at the end of the month. Thank you all so much for attending. I am gonna stay on a few more minutes to answer some of the questions that are in the Q&A. Um, and if there's any to announce on the phone, I will. But I will be staying a few minutes to make sure all of these are answered. Have a wonderful day. I will see you next week for office hours at 1 o'clock. This has been a presentation of the Louisiana Department of Education, copyright 2017, all rights reserved. For more information or to contact the Louisiana Department of Education, on the web go to www.louisianabelieves.com or call 1-877-453-2721.